TSN's Motoring 94 is brought to you by Quaker State. Quaker State, one tough motor oil. And Midas, for brake, exhaust, suspension, and steering service, trust your car to Midas. This week, a very special edition of Motoring 94 as we choose the best cars for the model year 1994 in selected categories, as well as our overall car of the year. Hello, everybody. Our backdrop this week is the Chrysler Assembly Plant in Bramley, Ontario. This is home to last year's newest and hottest vehicle and our car of the year, the LH Sedans. We'll check out more of the plant later on. All the regulars will be here. In fact, Jim Kenzie has already left us to check out the robots. Bill Gardner will be checking in. And joining us right now is our man behind the wheel each week on Test Drive, Graham Fletcher. Now, Graham, selecting the car of the year, let's face it, it is not an easy job. But is it more difficult today in the 90s than it was, let's say, 10 years ago? Very definitely so. I mean, 10 years ago, there was a very definite tiered system. You had good cars, mediocre cars, and truly dreadful cars. Today, the spectrum is very narrow, and in fact, since 88, we've only really tested one bad car, and that was the Lada. And we'll leave that subject where it lies. Now, let's check out the criteria and the categories we're going to see. Okay, the criteria is very simple. The car has to be new. Sticking a set of tail lights on and calling it a new car doesn't cut the mustard. Now, the categories are as follows. First up, we've got economy car, which is a car under $15,000. Next up, family car, which is priced between $15,000 and $30,000. Then we've got luxury car, which is a car over $30,000. Then we've got van and wagon, best new pickup truck, and last but not least, and everybody's favorite category, best new sports or performance car. And from all those winners, we will select the overall car of the year. But let's get things started now and check out our nominees for Economy Car of 1994. The nominees for Economy Car of the Year are the Hyundai Elantra, the Nissan Sentra Coupe, and the Subaru Impreza. Hyundai have never let the grass grow under their feet, the latest edition of their popular Elantra model being a good example. It makes a short list because of the extensive improvements made in the area of safety. Both a driver's side airbag and ABS are available options. Throw in the powerful 1.8 litre engine found in the GLS model and you cannot ask for much more in any economy car. The new Sentra Coupe replaces the old Sentra Classic in Nissan's lineup, improving things in every way. Like its four-door counterpart, the Coupe comes with impressive credentials. The styling is contemporary, the engine powerful, and the automatic you get now has four gears rather than three, improving fuel economy. From a purely subjective standpoint, the new Coupe is a pleasure to drive. While the new Impreza boasts its own distinctive style, it benefits from being built on the larger legacy platform. This accounts for its comfortable ride and stable handling. Inside, the car is roomy and offers a nice large trunk. Add to that little lot the availability of four-wheel drive, a driver's side airbag, and ABS, and you have a terrific little vehicle ideally suited to Canadian winters. Picking a winner here was very difficult, but in the end, our economy car of the year goes to the Subaru Impreza. That looks like a Charlie Chaplin movie, doesn't it? But that's the way cars are built these days, with automated robots doing the heavy, difficult jobs like welding these bodies together. But you know, the car makers can't abdicate responsibility for quality to a bunch of machines. I've been in a lot of highly automated car factories that are very efficient at turning out junk. Now, the key to a good car is still a good workforce. But no longer can someone get a job bolting fenders on a car and retire after 40 years. Today's workforce has to be more educated, more intelligent, and more adaptable than ever before, continually learning new skills like how to program these robots. And you know, that's an advantage that Canada has over other countries that build cars. We do have a well-educated, well-motivated workforce who are used to working with high-tech stuff like this. These people can compete with anybody.
We're back at the Chrysler assembly plant in Bramley, Ontario. And joining me right now from Chrysler Canada is Walt McCall. And Walt, 1993 was an incredible year for Chrysler. Probably everybody selected the LH sedan as car of the year, and this is where it all started. Tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Well, this is this. You're right, Brad. This has been an incredible success story for Canadian industry in general. We're building 978 of these cars a day. The car is still back ordered. We're building five different cars here: the uh, Dodge and uh, Chrysler Intrepid, Eagle Vision, Chrysler Concorde, the New Yorker, and the Chrysler LHS. We also build a six model that we're starting to export to Europe. Well, McCall Chrysler Canada, thank you very much. And later on, Jim Kenzie is going to give us his personalized tour of the plant. But right now, let's go to our nominees for Family Car of the Year for the model year 1994. The nominees for Family Car of the Year are the Saab 900, the Toyota Camry Coupe, and the Volkswagen Jetta. For the first time since 1978, Saab have introduced a totally new version of the 900 hatchback. The distinctive style still bears a large resemblance to its rather quirky predecessor, but the more rounded lines add a modern flair to the look. The base model comes loaded to the gunnels. On board you'll find all the right safety equipment, and if you go with the V6 engine you get traction control. While not cheap, you get an awful lot of car for the dollar. The Camry has always been one of my all-time favorites in the family car category. This new coupe reaffirms that belief. As with its four-door sibling, the coupe benefits from a new three-liter engine, which is matched with an equally new intelligent automatic transmission. During the test session, the coupe handled the pylon test extremely well. It also afforded superior ride comfort out on the road. From a safety standpoint, the coupe comes with standard airbags for both front passengers and anti-lock brakes are available. The Jetta's new style is distinctive and contemporary, updating a car that was beginning to show its age. From the family perspective, the mammoth trunk and roomy interior are sure to appeal. Performance is sprightly and the handling characteristics second to none. My one gripe with this car is the fact that in order to get an airbag, you must order an entire package and an expensive one at that. For this reason, the Jetta finished a close second to our family car of the year, the Saab 900. Well, let me tell you, a lot of midnight oil was burned trying to come up with a winner in that family category. It was not easy. No, you're right there, Brad. This was by far and away the most difficult category. All three of them would have made very nice winners. I discounted the Camry because it's a two-door, and we are, after all, talking family car here. The choice between the Saab and the Jetta came down to the fact that the Saab is only $2,000 more than the Jetta when equivalently equipped, and as far as I'm concerned, the Saab is worth a lot more than the Jetta when it gets down to that type of criteria. Now, true or not, one of the big knocks against the Saab has been reliability. You get to know your mechanic more than you'd like well, to. Well, you know, I mean, they've produced the 9000. They've had a lot of success with that car, and I think they've proved they can produce a reliable car. The other thing, having annexed all Saab dealers to the Saturn franchises, access to service is that much easier. All right, I can hear the debate beginning already. Now our next category, luxury, $30,000 and up. Let's check out our nominees. The nominees for luxury car of the year are the BMW 540, the Lexus GS300 and the Mercedes-Benz C280. The BMW 540 is a wonderful example of why German cars are so respected, especially when it comes to luxury cars. The new 4-liter V8 under the hood is a real fire breather providing stunning performance. On the skid pad, the 540 was only a fraction of a second off the record for the fastest through the pylons, and yet the ride comfort is as good as it gets. The 540 is the best Bimmer to date. The new GS300 was penned by famed Italian designer Giugiaro. Under the hood is a 220 horsepower engine that is matched with much of the same drivetrain found in the highly respected LS400. The benefit of that being a very sophisticated traction control system. Factor in the level of comfort and convenience as well as the dual airbags and ABS and you can't go wrong with this car. The new C-Class cars replace the old 190 series in the Benz lineup. There are three new models, the C220, the C220 SE and the C280. 
the C280 being the class act and epitome of luxury. Scan through the list of standard equipment and you'll find not much missing. At the bottom of the list you'll find a coffee cup holder, a first for Mercedes. Combine that lot with excellent ride handling and performance and I think it's safe to say that Mercedes-Benz figures should take a dramatic turn for the better. However, the 1994 luxury car of the year is the BMW 540. Okay, sharp-eyed viewers, spot the differences between these two cars. Not including the color, of course. Well, this one has two backup lights. The license plate holes are in the normal place. And this one's badged as an Eagle. This car has a single backup light plus a rear fog lamp. The license plate mounting holes are farther apart. And it's badged as a Chrysler. A couple of other minor details, side marker lights, different windshield wipers, and so forth. But the biggest difference? This car is going to Germany. That's right, Chrysler is now selling visions on the European continent. That's a testimony to the way in which the North American car industry has improved both the design and the quality of their cars, that visions can compete with cars like that BMW we saw just a few minutes ago. From Bramley, Ontario to the German Autobahns, that's quite a step. I would love to have a Ferrari for, for just driving around and, you know, having fun on it, you know, yeah. Probably a Jag, nice navy blue Jag with gray interior and a four-door. Well, I think I'm going to disappoint you. I'm going to pick something fairly basic and simple. Um, I think I'd like a Ford Explorer. Maybe a few options, but uh, nothing too pretty. Something uh, useful. Mercedes. Why do you say that? Uh, because I'm the suburb suburban housewife that has to drive around in a van all the time, and uh, I think I'd like to have something just for myself, a pretty classy car. Uh, and wouldn't it be nice if money was no object? We're back here at the Chrysler Assembly Plant in Bramley, Ontario, as we continue with our Car of the Year special. Now, we're going to leave for a moment, head to the garage, and join Bill Gardner. Now, Bill. I'm going to give you two choices of vehicles to go out and purchase. The first one, money's no object. The second car has to have an affordable, realistic price tag. Which two cars would you come back with? Well, Brad, I guess you've noticed it's no secret that I'm, that I'm in the market for just about anything new. My pickup truck's uh, getting a little bit on the rusty side, and uh, no amount of duct tape's going to fix this baby anymore. So. Uh, I guess if it was uh, an un unlimited price tag, my choice uh, for a, certainly for a personal vehicle would be the BMW 850 12-cylinder car. I love the looks of that car, and I, I really like the way BMWs in general drive, the, the ergonomics, the, the feel of the seats, the interior. They're just really beautiful driver's cars. But there's one other vehicle that uh, I really, really could use more than anything else, and that's a brand new pickup truck. Would probably be the most practical thing for me here around the shop. And that'd be it right there, the Dodge Ram V10. Just a dynamite looking vehicle with all kinds of practical features. And uh, I'm just drooling over those babies, I'll tell you. If I can make some money this year at the shop, well, next year you'll probably see one of these in the bay here. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 94. Hey, don't I get a vote in this deal? You know, if I could have just one car cost no object, I'd get Chrysler and General Motors to get together to take the V10 engine from the Viper and stick it into a Chevrolet Suburban. Now, that'd be a family car of a lifetime. But for cars that you can actually buy, well, it'd be a toss-up between a Porsche Carrera 4 and a BMW M5. Now, with all my kids, I'd need about six trips to get them anywhere in the Porsche. I could do it all in two with the BMW, so it'd be an M5 for me. Mr. Diamond, sir, what is your choice? Well, without a doubt, one of my all-time favorite cars is the Porsche 911 Turbo. And yes, if I had to have a vehicle beside it in my driveway, it would be the BMW M5. And isn't it nice to dream? And later on, we'll find out what Graham Fletcher is also dreaming about. But first, he's standing by with the next two categories. Best Van Wagon of 94, followed by the Best Pickup. The nominees for best new van or wagon are the Audi 100 CS Quattro, the Subaru Impreza and the Volvo 850 Turbo Wagon. Audi's design philosophy is one of control. The new 100 Quattro Wagon exemplifies this credo. Control starts with the Quattro all-wheel drive system. 
This ensures that the power from the new 2.8 litre engine is always directed to the wheels with the most traction. Control continues with the standard ABS and precise handling characteristics. Inside, nothing has been left to chance. There is a full slate of comfort and convenience right down to the third seat. The Subaru Impreza wagon is the most affordable in the burgeoning wagon market. Amongst its attributes are the availability of four-wheel drive, anti-lock brakes and a driver's side airbag. Inside, the wagon is well appointed and perhaps more importantly versatile. During the test, we had ample opportunity to put the four-wheel drive version through its paces in some very tough driving conditions. The nice part being that the car came through with flying colours. In the world of wagons, the new 850 Turbo is the sports car. Start with a 222 horse engine, the most powerful produced by Volvo to date, add a suspension with 16 inch tyres and traction control. Stir in Volvo's legendary reputation for safety and you have a recipe for success. So much so that the new 850 Turbo wagon walked off with our award for the best new van or wagon. The nominees for best new pickup are the Chevrolet S10 and GMC Sonoma, the Dodge Ram and the Mazda B-Series. GM's new compact pickups have been re-engineered and redesigned from road to roof. The theme for these changes focus on safety, performance and durability. Available four-wheel ABS and side door impact members look after safety, while a revamped 4.3 litre V6 that pumps out 195 horses looks after the performance. The introduction of the new Ram sets a change in motion, a change that both Ford and GM are going to have to address quickly if they are to maintain market share. There are no fewer than five different engines available, culminating in the same awesome V10 found in the Viper. Perhaps the best part of the new Ram is its style. The freight liner-ish front end adds distinction to a tremendous pickup. Mazda's new B-Series lineup features a complete redesign of Canada's most popular imported pickup. This new rendition is based upon the Ford Ranger released last year. There are two box lengths, two or four wheel drive, three engines, two trim levels, as well as two different cab styles. Inside, the tendency for this new breed of truck to look and feel like a car continues. The easy winner here, however, is the Dodge Ram pickup. Well, Graham's got another comment on that Dodge Ram, but first, a little trivia, at least for you city folk. Do you know what has been the best-selling vehicle in North America for the past 11 years? Give up? A pickup truck, the Ford F-Series, followed very closely by the Chevy CK Series. So there you go. All right, over to Graham, another comment on the Dodge. Well, Brad, do you know that in the recent Automobile Journalist Car of the Year session, the Dodge Ram didn't even make the final three? Now that to me is preposterous because it stands head and shoulders over any of the competition. Now I say that in deference to the Sonoma, but when you talk significant, you talk Dodge Ram. All right, still to come, the performance car of 1994 followed by the overall car of the year when we return from the Chrysler assembly plant in Bramley, Ontario. Midas tip of the week concerns the use of silicone dielectric compound during a tune-up. This is an often overlooked step, but it's quite important in our weather conditions with blowing snow, fog, and dampness quite, quite prevalent in uh, the fall and winter time. What you want to do with this dielectric compound is squeeze a little bit into all the spark plug boots when you're doing a tune-up or replacing plug wires or a distributor cap. Just wipe it around the inside of all the uh, boots before you plug the wiring boot onto that spark plug or distributor cap and it will help affect the seal between those two parts in this case the porcelain of the spark plug to the spark plug boot because it's quite easy for that area to get greasy oily or dirty and uh, have a spark actually jump across and uh, jump to ground on the shell of the spark plug rather than firing the spark plug electrode inside the cylinder the other place that you're going to use this compound is at the distributor cap one manufacturer, for example, Ford, actually includes this with a set of spark plug wires and recommends that you use it. Whether or not you get it with your parts, make sure you use it. That's your Midas tip of the week. 
Well, it's now our favorite time of the program. The Sport Performance Car nominees for 1994. Yeah, you got that right. Fun personified because all these nominees were a blast to drive. We've got the Chev Camaro, the Ford Mustang GT, and the Toyota Supra. The fourth generation Camaro has been completely redesigned. The new shape says fast. Pop the hood and you'll find the same LT1 motor that powers the VET. Performance is quite simply spectacular. Inside, the Camaro has been spruced up and twin airbags added. This edition is definitely not for the faint of heart. For more than 15 years, the Mustang has remained relatively unchanged. As this popular marquee enters its 30th year, Ford have spruced up the original pony car. Gone is the dowdy look in favor of a rather fresh appearance. Not all has changed, however, because under the hood is the same 5-liter V8 that powered last year's model. The disappointment being that both output and performance are down compared to last year's car. Toyota's Road Rocket has been completely redesigned. Under the hood is one of the world's few engines that produces more than 100 horsepower per liter. Much of the credit going to the sophisticated sequential twin-turbo setup. Throw in traction control, ABS and a truly wonderful suspension and you have the essence of Supra. There's a tie here with both the Chev Camaro and the Toyota Supra sharing the award for the best new sports or performance car. I can hear everybody now. A tie? I mean, isn't that taking the easy way out? No, not at all. When you look at the two cars involved here, when you talk affordability, you talk Camaro. Bang for the buck is what you've got there. When you talk performance and panache, you're talking about the Supra. I'll tell you one thing, Graham. The new Ford Mustang, a good car, but it doesn't have anybody at General Motors worried. Not at all. All right, it's now time for our overall car of the year. But before we get to that, we promise Jimmy the first word. Well, it looks like I get to cast the first vote for the overall car of the year. And to me, there's never been an easier choice. 275 horsepower, six-speed gearbox, dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, all standard equipment, plastic rust-proof body panels. It's under $25,000, and it's built right here in Canada. Obvious choice, Chevrolet Camaro. Now, I've agreed with these other two guys for two years in a row. Any chance they could be right three times in a row? Now let's review our category winners and therefore the cars eligible for our car of the year. In the economy car we picked the Subaru Impressa. The family car went to the Saab 900. The luxury car to the BMW 540. And the best new van and wagon is the Volvo 850. The best new pickup, Dodge Ram. And in sport or performance car, the Camaro and Supra tie. It's now time for our car of the year. A drum roll if you please. Our 1994 car of the year is the Volvo 850 Turbo Wagon. Why the wagon? Quite simple. It embodies everything I find desirable in a car. Versatile, practical, safe, but above all, I couldn't resist the 222 horses. That's true, Graham. And you know, the looks of the Volvo may not be everybody's cup of tea, but the new Volvo of the 90s will certainly be attracting a whole new breed of owners. Now, before we go, we promised we'd ask Graham if money was no object, which car he'd have in his driveway. This is where you turn me into a politician, or a diplomat, I should say. I'd split my pot of gold two ways. I'd get my Q45, and the wife would get her Ford Explorer. All right. Well, that is it for this special edition of Motoring 94. We want to congratulate all the winners. And you know, year after year, these automobiles keep getting better, and it's getting more competitive out there. Not only in the showroom, but maybe more importantly, in the customer service area. The result, we're all winners. That's it for now. We'll see you next week for more stories about cars and the people who drive them. TSN's Motoring 94 has been brought to you by Quaker State. Quaker State, one tough motor oil. And Midas, for brake, exhaust, suspension, and steering service, trust your car to Midas.